Trapezius muscle receives its vital information from the spinal accessory nerve, cranial nerve 11, which emanates in the brain stem and upper cervical spine. The scenario of events that triggers frozen shoulder syndrome begins with the skull becoming locked in a single position and is guided there by a series of biomechanical movements. These movements are head extension, looking upward, lateral flexion, ear toward the shoulder, and rotation to the opposite side of the lateral flexion. This condition locks the head in an upward gaze. The writing mechanism of the nervous system drives the lower cervical spine into forward flexion. This position allows the head to face forward and the eyes to find the horizon line. This position also gives the subject a visibly head-forward posture. The combination of the head being locked in extension and the lower cervical spine forced into flexion creates a tethering of the brainstem and upper cervical spine. If the tethering force is great enough, any nerve aligned in the tethered area will undergo a state of neuropraxia, or motor paralysis, ischemia, or reduced blood flow, and inflammation. The affected nerve cannot function normally. When the nerve involvement includes the spinal accessory nerve, impaired function of the trapezius muscle occurs, and consequently, the shoulder movement is affected. When this biomechanical relationship of the skull on the spine is corrected, and normal tension and blood flow are restored to the brain stem, the nervous system usually returns to normal. The frozen shoulder syndrome is broken, and the process 